What's going on, Redemption Family Online? Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Jocelyn. (laughs) I'm Pastor Justin. And welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so glad that you're here today. Why don't you go ahead and let us know where you're watching from. Let us know. I mean, if you're in the kitchen making breakfast right now and you've decided to join us this morning, guess what? We are so proud of you. And we want you to let us know what you're cooking. I'm a little hungry. (laughs) But we really want to know what city, what state, what country. We have people from all over the world that join with us every week. And um, we're so grateful for the support. We're so glad to call you family. So let us know. And if you're it's your first time here, you can text that number, text guest to 423-200-4933. We would love, our team will reach out yeah. um, and, and welcome you. And we would just love to know like how you found out about us. Was it on Facebook or what is it? You know, we want to know. We really want to engage with our family online. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, you know, this day and age with all the technology, you can literally stream any church in America. And uh, the fact that you guys would choose to tune in with us, yeah. it's just really powerful and we do appreciate it. Absolutely. And um, really believe God's doing something amazing. Uh, I don't, sure. If you guys tuned in last Sunday, I mean, it was it was Man. incredible. God was yeah. moving in an incredible way, yes. and uh, just really powerful what God's doing. So thank you guys. Thank you for tuning in and be a part of that. Uh, it makes a difference, and uh, we pray that y'all are receiving everything yeah. that we are receiving in the house. And we believe uh, it does work that way. Otherwise, we wouldn't believe in the live stream in itself. But it's really cool. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, listen, we have a f- couple of few uh, quick announcements tonight. Sunday night. We've been having some amazing Sunday night services, yeah. but tonight we are not having a Sunday night service because we have a team getting ready to go to, um, I think it's the rain uh, gathering, and what it is is we have a team going to uh, Washington, Washington, D.C., our yeah. state capital, That's our wild. pastors, uh, people from here, people from the school, kids from the school, they're going there, and they're going to be praying. I mean, I'm really looking this, forward to what the Lord's going to do in our state capital this week because yeah. with the team from here and all the prayers going out and the worship going out, I mean, I'm looking forward to hearing about the miracles, about the shift that is just brought to our nation just because a presence has gone out. And um, I don't know, like, if, if you've been listening to Pastor Devin any time in the past few weeks, I mean, there's just been this fire in the inside of her, this passion, oh and I'm just like... Ooh, I can't wait to yeah. see what they do there this and week. And there's just something powerful within uh, the sons and daughters of this yeah. house and uh, their passion for uh, our country. And um, there's a lot of tension, a lot of things going, a lot of uncertainty right now. And so uh, to be able to just go pray, pray for our leaders, our president, yeah. Congress. On the and, <laughs> Yeah, just, yeah. Uh, you know, take it to them. You know, right. uh, we pray from here all the time. But mm-hmm. to be able to go to D.C. and uh, uh, take the prayer to them and yeah. I think our prayer is that others would see that and just and and, and just know that God is real, you know, yeah. and, and that God is doing something in our country because we do believe that revival is here, and Absolutely. so it's not coming; it's here. So it's yeah, really sure. cool. Um, yeah. One thing I wanted to talk about was uh, House Fires Interest Group. So that launches today. Woo-hoo. So if you are a member of this house and you are watching online because you are out of town, better not be because you couldn't get here. But if you're out of town. It's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sign up, sign up. Uh, the uh, We have the link online on our app. So uh, sign up to be a part of a group. Um, getting to know each other is is huge. Connection is huge. Um, you know, we, we, we're all... We're all uh, connected through this house. And so uh, being connected to each other is a huge thing. Uh, I always say this, um, your answer to your prayers locked up in somebody else. And so uh, I think it's very powerful for us. Uh, and it talks about an acts where they met in the temple and in their houses daily. Yeah. It's just a big part of yeah. what the church is. So if you're a part of this house and you live in the Chattanooga, Cleveland, area um go on uh go on our app uh sign up for a group uh the groups are all listed there and there's a variety of groups there's a young adult group uh i'm kind of capped out of that one but you know (laughs) still young at heart yeah i'm a a few (laughs) years capped out of that one but uh women's groups men's groups all kind of stuff um there's a group for real estate uh investors there's a group for um uh, all women's uh, intercessory prayer, Ooh, um, special needs kids. I mean, you name it, it's all there. And so uh, would love to have you guys be a part of that uh, and watch what God does. I mean, I, I just I just always dare people. Yeah. Get to know some people and watch what God does. Watch your prayers start. Watch open doors happen. It's just how it works. Yeah. It's how God moves in the earth. So I just want to encourage you guys yeah. with that. Yeah. That sounds amazing. I'm excited about that. And another way that we come together and are unified is through prayer and fasting, which begins tomorrow night um tonight if you want to if you're feeling bold go for it 
I like to get a last piece of like fried chicken, some dessert, sure. and on the last day. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, I'm Absolutely. But this week, Monday uh, through Wednesday, we have our it's monthly, you know, prayer and fasting, and um, we always say there's no fasting, please. Do what, you know, if you're praying about it, you're like, Lord, what should I set aside right now? It's not about, you know, oh, let me go on a diet. It's not about, like, well, how much should I do? But it's about seeking the Lord um, and just putting aside something so that you can truly fix your gaze upon him and then joining together with prayer, which we're about to go in here soon. But awesome. that is coming up this week, guys. Um, listen, like we said, or we have something else. There's one more announcement. Family yeah. dedications. Right? Family dedications, October 8th. Come if you haven't signed up. You can sign up online, and uh, we're getting ready to go to the service. Y'all enjoy. We love you. God be with you. Absolutely, guys. We'll see you here next week. We love y'all. Enjoy the service. Against your enemies and see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you. Do not be afraid of them. For the Lord your God is with you, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. So it shall be when you are on the verge of battle, that the priest shall approach and speak to the people, and he shall say to them what I'm telling you this morning. Hear, O Israel, hear, O RTTN. Today you are on the verge of battle with your enemies. Do not let your hearts faint. Do not be afraid and do not tremble or be terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. For he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night. I don't know who had a rough night, but I'm here to tell you, you should not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right side, but they will not draw nigh. Who is ready to worship the God who says, you do not need to be afraid this morning. I don't know what the situation is. I don't know what the illness is. I don't know what the enemy has brought against you. But I'm just here to remind you that we serve a God who is mighty in power. A God who is worthy of it all. And he says, listen, if you just bring it to me this morning, I promise that I'm going to make it right, says the Lord. So here, ORTTN, here, RTTN online. You do not need 
that says, where two or more are gathered, what? In his name, that he will be there in their midst. So can we just take a second and lift up that name, letting him know, God, you can dwell in our midst today. You are welcome to be here in the middle of what we do. Can we lift up that name? Somebody shout Jesus. Somebody shout Yahweh. You are welcome here in our midst as we worship you. Now one more time with a, with from a deep place in your belly. Can you just lift up praise to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're here to celebrate. 
place. Somebody is going to run out of a dead season into a season full of life. I hear that scripture in my spirit that says the same power that raised Christ from the dead is dwelling in me today. I've asked Miss Janice to come. I want her to blow the show for this morning. And when she does, I Here 
comes the glory of the Lord, sweeping in the room. We sing it again, here it comes, here it comes.
everything, every molecule, every situation, everything, everything, everything has to bow at the name of Jesus. Everything has to bow at your name. Everything has to bow at your name. So we sing, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. So we bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Now would you thank him for being such a good, good, good king? We open up our mouths and we say, tomb to a table you prepared the way you're the bread of life my hunger satisfied and when I'm in your company I'm feasting on eternity
Lift your hands, family. Lift your hands. Oh, as I was standing there, I heard the Lord say, I am in the room. I am in the room. I'm in the room and I'm reminded of a scripture over in Exodus chapter 3 where Moses said, who shall I say sent me? And God said, tell them I am that I am sent you. And that's all good and well. But as I was standing there, I looked it up and I am in the strongest concordance says to be done, to bring about, to come to pass, to be finished, to be gone. And I don't know who is your Pharaoh today. I don't know what's standing in front of you today from your miracle or standing in between you and the miracle that you are after. But I'm telling you, I am sent me today to tell the children of God that he has it covered, that he has it covered. He has it covered. There's somebody in this room that needs a healing touch. And the Lord says, I am because I am. There's somebody in this room that needs a miracle in their finances. And the Lord said, tell them, I am because I am. Send me. Let's worship I am. Let's worship I am. We give you glory. We give you glory for you're worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the king of glory. I am is in the room. We sit at the table with I am. There's somebody in this room with diabetes, sugar diabetes, and the Lord's saying, I know you've been to the doctor. I know you've been here. I know you've been there. But I am in the room. I am in the room. I am in the room. And you say, well, that's great and well and good for, for Moses and the children of Israel who were in bondage in Egypt. But I keep reading and it says, after he says, tell them that I am sent you. He said, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. This is my name forever. Oh, hey, it didn't stop in Exodus. It didn't stop there. It didn't stop in the desert. This is my name forever. I am. Jehovah Rapha is in the room right now. Jehovah Rapha. If there is, mm, if there is someone in this room that needs a healing touch from heaven, I want you to lift your hands right now because we are going to agree and declare and prophetically speak healing into the atmosphere. I want you to prophesy to your Pharaoh. I want you to prophesy right now to the thing that has been trying to keep you back. The power of life and death is in the tongue. I want you to declare, declare that you are healed Speak to the sickness and say, be gone, be gone, be gone, because you are saying it in the authority of the great I am. 
Amy, you're healed in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree healing. I prophetically speak healing over you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, the great I am. The great I am. If there is someone in this room right now that is in financial need, I want you to lift your hand. If you are waiting for a financial miracle, I want, don't be ashamed. I want you to lift your hand because I know a God that is a provider. His name is Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. I want you to prophesy right now. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous, the scripture says. I want you to speak. I want you to speak it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord Jesus. Oh, I thank you, Father, for what I feel in this room. I thank you that you are the Lord of healing. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Yeah, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now. Let's glorify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. I exalt thee, Father. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. If you would, please turn your attention to Pastor Quan. Tell us he comes to do announcements and the offering. Hallelujah. Give him a hand clap of praise. Oh, give him a hand clap of praise, family. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy. Oh, come on, family. Bless the Lord as you take your seat. Can we just bless the Lord? The I am is in the room. Amen. 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 If this is your first time worshiping with the RTTN family, first time guests in the house, would you just throw your hands up at me if it's your first time here? We got some family right here, right here. First time. Oh, come on, RTTN. Make some noise. Oh, family over here. I see you back there, brother. Hey, glory. Hey, look, first time, if you're online and this is your first time worshiping with the RTTN family, if you would uh, text the word guest to 423-200-4933. Again, that's 423-200-4933. We just want to connect with you, figure out how we can do life for you, how we can pray for you, and we're honored that you stopped by the house on today. One more time, can we make some noise for our RTTN? Listen, there's no Sunday night service tonight. No service tonight. Look to your neighbor and say, no service tonight. Somebody shout house fires. I didn't feel you shout house fires. Listen, house fires and interest groups launched today. You can find a listing of every group on our website through the app or visit us or visit a booth in the lobby. Interest groups and house, um, and, uh, house fires are amazing. I believe they have golf, fishing, whatever you're into. There's something for you. Look to your neighbor and say, there's something for you. Fasting and prayer. Our time of fasting and prayer for the month of October will be tomorrow through Wednesday. That's the third uh, through the fifth. If you just want to fast something, pray with us and believe, uh, that starts tomorrow. Somebody shout family dedication. Listen, you can register online or go to our app of uh, Family dedication is coming up this Saturday, October 8th. If you need more information, you can go uh, online, visit our app, or meet one of us out in the lobby if you want to dedicate your little one. Amen. Amen. Who's ready to give today? Who was in the house when that glory bomb dropped last week? Listen, listen. Um, I'm not going to attempt to try to explain it. But um, it was crazy. It was amazing. And one thing happened, Pastor Chris. I'm over there trying to wrap my mind around all that God is doing. And I get a text message from my wife. And she says, the Lord gave me this number. <laughs> and if you know the story about me and my wife were offering, I had to repent in the midst of the glory bomb because I was like, I didn't open that message. I did not open that message. But I opened the message and I told her, I agree with you. 
Amen. How many know we ate cold cuts for Sunday dinner? You know, it was. And I just believe as I was standing there worshiping, I just believe we're in a season of obedience. We're in that season that I believe when you say, God, you can, you can have all of me. God, it's all yours. Invade every area of my life. And I want to worship you in every area of my life. I believe we're in the season of radical obedience. Unexplainable, why did I just do that obedience? Yes, sir. And I believe when we operate and we navigate through that season of radical obedience, I believe on the other side of radical, why did I do that obedience, is who is it couldn't be nobody but God miracles and breakthrough. Hey, glory. I believe that's the season we're in. And I don't know what that looks like for you. But if you're ready to give and you're ready to tithe, and you're ready to step into a season of radical obedience. Only you know what that means to you and your family. Only you know what that looks like for you and your family. Bow your heads, let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this house. Lord, I thank you for this fellowship. I thank you for the believers in this house. I thank you for our pastors, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that in spite of us, you've been faithful. Hey, God, you've been good to us, Father God. And we love you today, God. So, Father God, if you would, if you would take our little and do a lot with it. If you would take our mites, Father God, and advance your kingdom for your glory in the earth. We'll be careful to give you all the honor and all the praise. We thank you today, God. Lord, right now, Father God, as they give, Father God, release a supernatural breakthrough in their life. Healing. Marriage is restored. Prodigals coming home. Sickness has to flee. Financial increase in every area that they need it. And we love you today, God, and we honor you. And the people of God said, and the people of God said, hey, you can stand up, you can bring your gift, you can give online, or you can give via the app. and stand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So I have the, I have the honor, the great honor to introduce a phenomenal, phenomenal speaker, but more so a friend uh, of our ministry, uh, a great friend to Bishop uh, and First Lady. Uh, it's, it's, it's evangelist Tony Suarez. Let's go ahead and give it tone. That's right. That's right. Tony is the he is the founder of Revival Makers, a spirit-filled evangelic ministry or uh, evangelistic ministry, and uh, it's it's. Man, we've traveled different places together. Uh, we've been in different meetings, and he is the real deal. Uh, he and his wife, Gina, uh, and his five children reside here in Tennessee. See, the, we, we, we kind of did, like, we're the same kind of, we New Jersey, 
and then back to Tennessee. So now we're halfway back, I guess. I'm not, but, uh, but, but I just want us to go ahead and as he comes to bring the word today, if we would just go ahead and uh, welcome him to the pulpit. One more time, give God praise in this tabernacle for who he is and what he's done and what he's about to do. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I worship you. I praise you. I am here on apostolic assignment to commission this house a house of miracles. I am here under the instruction of the Holy Ghost for the next season of this house and what God wants to do. I give honor to your incredible bishop and pastors, Kevin and Devin Wallace, great generals of the faith and in the kingdom of God. I'm so excited to see what God's going to do. We have been in several days of revival in Cleveland, Tennessee. We saw people come out of wheelchairs last night. We saw people that came in with boots on their leg that pulled the boots off because of an issue with their Achilles and they just, they left the boot and they went home completely healed. I, we saw eyes open up and, and shoulders pop back into place. And I got good news for you. The God of Saturday night is the God of Sunday morning and he's in this house to do precisely that today. We decree this is the Sunday of miracles. This is the Sunday morning of the supernatural. And anything he did yesterday, anything he did in this good book, bless God, he can do it again in this house right now with your situation. And we declare miracles come, healing come, finances come, restoration, someone shout come. Whatever it is, I declare it's coming right now. It's coming to the house. It's coming to your life. It's by the time you get home, before the roast is done that you left in the oven, that miracle will have already come. Give them praise if that's your word. Utamashe. I'm so thankful to be here. I got my youngest with me. I got five teenagers at home. There's a reason I travel alone. Sometimes I need a break. But that, now one time I said, this is my baby. And he said, no, I'm not. You know, he's 13, so you can't call him a baby anymore. But this is my armor bearer. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. That's a future preacher, prophet right there. Everybody else wants to sleep in. He says, dad, can I go to church? That's my boy right there. And I want to honor my son today, Zachary, that's with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Since you're already standing, let's go to the book of John chapter 5, and I'll make you a deal. After this, you can sit, and I'll keep standing. Amen. I have a new book that was released just a few months ago called Revival Makers. I was preaching in Phoenix, Arizona for a great church called Fresh Start, and it, it wasn't even in my notes. I was just talking about the pursuit of revival, because we've always been chasing after revival chasing after the move of God it just came out of my spirit God said I don't need revival chasers I need revival makers I need Mark 16 believers that wherever they go revival breaks out and then the Lord said revival is not coming revival is here these are the days that were spoken of by the prophet Joel when he said, in the last day, saith God, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. These are the days we've been waiting for. These are the days that our grandparents prophesied about and our parents are building for. Any of you old time Pentecostals in the room, you remember going to youth camp and you'd have a great move of God and an elder would always get up and grab the mic and say, you haven't seen anything yet. And I'm like, man, that was a pretty good service. No more. No more. The responsibility of revival does not belong to tomorrow. It doesn't belong to another generation. We're decreeing and declaring revival has come now. We're stepping into it. We're seeing it everywhere we go. Every nation, every tribe, every state. Doesn't matter if it's red or blue. 
I just spent 28 days in California. Yeah. I heard that California was like the waiting pool of the lake of fire. You know, I, I heard it was already like they, you know, it, it was already gone. But God had to check my spirit because I found a remnant in California. A remnant that hasn't bowed its knee to wokeism and liberalism and the gods of this world, but they've been standing in the gap. And God said, tell California that because of those that stood in the gap, I will give them a reprieve. He said, I've heard their prayers like I heard the prayers of the children of Nineveh. When Jonah came and said, destruction is coming, the people of Nineveh humbled themselves and prayed. He said, there is a remnant in California that has bowed their knee to Almighty God, and because of them, I'm giving them a reprieve. And rather than see destruction, they're going to see revival. In Tennessee, I know we're part of the Bible Belt, but that nasty old devil has tried to sneak into this state too. He's trying to he's trying to bring he's trying to bring just the most vile things into the schools where our children go. But we're going to stand at guard and we're going to declare, devil, you have no right to be in Tennessee. Not in Chattanooga, not in Cleveland, not in Johnson City, and not even in Nashville. We rebuke it. We declare. Revival is here. So that's available out there in the, uh, in the lobby. I'm very thankful that your pastor would trust me with your pulpit today. I have many friends that are here today. There's a man I met in the parking lot this morning at the hotel. And I told him where I'm preaching. He said, I'm going to be there. Praise the Lord. Is he here? There he is right over there. God bless you. I got friends from Nashville or Franklin here today somewhere out there. I don't know where they are, but I know they're out there. And then I saw Evangelist Triplet from Ohio. This is a tent evangelist from Ohio. Him and his wife are there, and they came to be they came to be with us in revival, and they're here this morning. God bless them for what they're doing. And to everyone that's here, God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm going to the book of John, chapter 5, and I'm going to begin reading in verse 1. And this is a familiar portion of Scripture. This is my assignment for this morning for this house. John chapter 5, verse 1 through verse 5. We know that Jesus spoke King James English, but I'm going to speak New Living Translation English this morning just so, just so that we understand it. Glory to God. <laughs> Afterward, Jesus returned to Jerusalem from one of the Jewish holy days. It's significant that the Lord would have us preach this today, coming directly out of the Jewish New Year. Inside the city near the Sheep Gate was the pool of Bethesda with five covered porches. And crowds, or another translation says, the multitude of sick came, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed, and would lay on the porches. And one of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. And when Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked him, would you like to be well? Would you like to be healed? I want to preach for just a few moments this morning on the subject, the house of miracles. I have been commissioned to the Holy Ghost to travel this nation and travel to the nations of the world to decree houses of miracles or modern day Bethesda's. And when you were singing about the house of miracle, when you were worshiping God, I felt that sweet presence of God come on me. He said, commission redemption to the nations. As the house of miracles of the East Tennessee Valley, speak into this atmosphere. Speak my word, said the Lord. And he said, commission this house to be known as the house of miracles of this region. And so that's what I intend to do. Father, have your way today, I pray. Use me for your glory. Let everything I do and everything I say point to you and give glory to your name. I ask that you would confirm your word with signs and miracles and wonders. Do it again, oh God. And may your name be glorified. And we say the house is ready in Jesus' name. And everybody said, would you praise him one more time as you find your seat?
I grew up in a, in a Pentecostal church where my father and my mother were the pastors. And we, um, we didn't play church. We weren't playing around. We weren't messing around. We were going to make sure that this gospel, this spirit, got into everyone, including the children. And so there was things that my father did. Not all the churches do them, but there was things my father did that have never left me. One of those was Bible reading. In our church, you had to read the Bible all the way through. Now, by the way, this isn't what I'm commissioning in the church, so no one get nervous. But every year, you had to read the Bible all the way through, or you couldn't serve in the church. You couldn't be in the nursery. Let alone, talk, forget about the platform for a minute. You couldn't serve in the nursery if you didn't read the Bible. You couldn't be an usher. You couldn't work in the parking lot. You had to turn in a monthly report and let us know how many books of the Bible you had read. I mean, this is the 80s, you know. They had poster board up in the lobby with the name of all the members of the church. And they put stickers next to every book of the Bible. And it was amazing. Come December, people could speed read through 45, 50, 55 books of the Bible because they didn't want to lose their place in the church. So it was normal to come home for school. Zachary, you don't know anything about what it's like living with your grandfather. I'd come home from school and most kids would throw their backpack and say, can I go play? And your mother and your father would say, well, you got to do your homework first. My daddy would say, you got to read your Bible first and then you do your homework and then you can go out and play. And every day we had to get that book and we had to read it. So I can say with assurance that I have read through this book more than I can count in my life. I've read from Genesis to Revelation there and back, and there are portions of that book that have never left me. They stay in me, and one of those is the story of Bethesda. This place or this house of miracles and healing. This is a place where it was known in the community that if you get to Bethesda, whatever ails you will be cured. Bethesda was known for miracles, not for despair. It was known for healing, not for sickness. And when all else failed and the doctors failed and home remedies failed and whatever is those oils that you sell when they failed and, and, and all that stuff you're sniffing, when all that stuff failed and, and, and your aromatherapy didn't work and your herbal therapy didn't work and all your fancy teas didn't work and when everything failed, you would get to Bethesda. It was known that nothing fails in Bethesda. It's almost a guarantee that if you get to Bethesda, you will be healed. No one went to Bethesda to die. No one went to Bethesda to stay sick. Everyone went expecting a miracle. It was known if I can just get there, I know I'll be healed. And according to the scripture, there was an angel that would visit Bethesda from time to time and would trouble or stir the water. And whoever was the first to enter in would be instantly and completely healed of anything that ailed them. And so they sat in expectation of the angel of the Lord, waiting for a visitation from heaven, hoping that today might be the day, that this might be the hour or perhaps the minute where everything would be made right in their lives. And the only thing between you and a miracle is that there might be someone that would step in the water before you. Pastor Chris, run up here. Brother Sam, and run up here for a minute too. I just need some help here for a minute. Come on up here with me. The only thing between, come up here next to me. I like people who got fancy shoes. Stand over here on this side. Just got Brother Chris with his humble shoes. Anyways. The only thing different between the three people up here is that one of us might dip before the others. Now, you said I'm from Jersey. I hung out in Jersey. I was originally from Chicago. The Witness Protection Program put me in Jersey. I'm just kidding. Stand real close because we're going to act Jersey-esque this morning. If it was me and the only thing between me and a miracle is you, I'm pushing. I'm fighting for position. 
I cut. I don't care. I'm from Chicago. We've been cheating ever since Chicago became a city. <laughs> Brother Salmon, you're a nice guy from Tennessee, but come here and push a little bit. I mean, you got a little Southern in you too. I know. Come on. There, th this is what, what I think it was like at Bethesda. Because everyone was trying to get positioned for a miracle. This is what I think it was like. Because the only thing between me and a miracle is that he might take a step before I do. So if it had been me, I'd have been real, real Chicago there. I'd say, hey, what's that right there? Psych. <laughs> I would have been fighting. In fact, if it was me, when it was time to go to sleep, I'd have slept like this. to make sure that my toe was close so that if I heard the troubling of the water, I'd be able to dip and get what I needed. This is, this is not a place where people would go to stay sick. Thank you, gentlemen. This isn't a place where people wanted to remain in the condition. All they had to do was position themselves and be at the right place at the right time in the right moment to get what they needed of God while they were waiting on a visitation. The church has been living off of visitations. Oh, Lord, visit us. Somebody needs you, Lord. Come by here. But hear the word of the Lord this morning. No longer do I want to visit your house. I want to inhabit your house as the spirit of the Lord. No longer do I want to come from time to time or service to service or just visit you during a conference or during a commissioning service. But I want to make of this house my habitation, says the spirit of God. I want to dwell in this house so that it's not just every now and then that the miracles happen, but every time you step foot in the room, you'll know the miracle worker is here. God says, I want to make this house a house of miracles where you know if you come for ladies' tea, there's an opportunity for healing. If you come on Sunday morning, there's an opportunity for healing. I want to make this my habitation, says the Lord. But they were still at visitation level. Positioning for the visitation And one day, while waiting on the angel of the Lord, the Lord that the angels worship walked in robed in flesh. What is it about Bethesda that caused God to say, I'm not sending an angel anymore. I'm going to go by myself. What is it about that place that would change it from a visitation to a habitation. It was the atmosphere of Bethesda. It was the level of faith in Bethesda. Nobody went to Bethesda with their fingers crossed. They went to Bethesda with their hands wide open. No one went hoping, everyone went expecting. These were like children on Christmas. It doesn't matter how much money or how much money you don't have. Every child goes to sleep on Christmas Eve expecting that when they wake up, there is going to be a gift under the tree or in the stocking for them. And these people went to Bethesda convinced. I know that I know that I know that I know that when I get in that room, I'm going to get the miracle that I need. It was their faith that pulled the Messiah into that place called Bethesda. Jesus was going elsewhere. Jesus was walking elsewhere. But the faith of the people drew the Son of God into that room. And I wonder if there's faith in this house tonight to say, God, I want to draw your presence into this room. I have suffered long enough. I have suffered from many doctors. I have suffered from much sickness. But my faith is going to draw you into this place. This I don't need a visitation. I need habitation. Give them praise. The faith drew him into the room. And he finds a man that had been there for 38 years. If anybody knew what the miraculous was like, is that guy. 
If there's anybody that knows what a move of God see, seems like, smells like, and looks like, it's that guy. I t I'm three generations in this thing. I love the Pentecostal church. And I remember showing up at service. I used to have to play the piano in my dad's church. You know, he, he was a church planner. We didn't have musicians. So my brother, he wasn't like ordained of God. He was commanded by my father. You're going to play the drums and you're going to play the piano. We're like, yes, sir. And I remember we get through music practice and the music was horrible and we'd been fighting and we just, I mean, we're already in a bad attitude. Service hasn't even started. And these little old saints would be coming in with their tambourines and their Bibles. You remember when your Bible was as big as a suitcase and they come holding the Bible here and tambourines under their arm and they're just walking and everything's shaking and they're just walking in the service. I just feel like something good is about to happen. And they're just smiling and you're like, how do you know? And they're like, ooh, I just know. I just woke up this morning and I just knew that something good was about to happen. They could sense it before would happen and my brother and I had been fighting before the service but once we got to singing and praising God the Holy Ghost would fall and you know we would see it afterwards but those people that were really sensitive to the spirit they never had to hear the strum of a guitar they never had to hear the clang of the piano they just knew when they woke up I just expect it I just know God is about to do something good in this when I woke up this morning in Cleveland and was driving here I just knew that God was going to do something good in this house I woke up with expectation I didn't come here hoping for miracles. I came looking for miracles. I just knew that when I got the assignment to come to this house, I knew that someone's life was going to be changed forevermore, not because of the preacher, but because of the God that I preach. I knew that if he showed up, anything and everything would be possible. And I got good news. You're in the miracle zone this morning, and anything is possible. That man that had been there 38 years, he could sense it. He knew where the good seats were. He knew, I have a feeling, he knew what the angel sounded like before the angel even touched the water. Because that's what 38 years will do. It'll give you experience. When I left Chicago and before I went to Jersey in the witness protection program, I lived in Virginia for a time. Now I'm a city boy. I don't know anything about farms and ranches and horses and cows. I know how to eat steak. That's about as far as it goes. I don't know anything else. And I moved to Virginia, and they take me to a farm outside of Verona, Virginia. I mean, this is, this. I've never seen stuff like this. This, this is what I saw on the movies. I mean, this is what I used to see on Little House on the Prairie. I never, my eyes had never seen so much green grass with no cement anywhere around. And, and, and I'm out in the farm, and you know, I don't, I, you know how kids walk now with their, you know, their shoes, they don't want to crease them, and they're, you know, they do the penguin walk. Well, I was doing the penguin and my loafers because I didn't know. Like all I had was loafers. And here I am walking amongst the cows and the grass and the mud. And here I, I don't know how to do this. And we're walking and they're giving me a tour of the farm. And that old farmer starts sniffing. And I'm self-conscious, you know. I get, I'm. And then he said, it's going to rain. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there wasn't a cloud in the sky. It was as blue as blue can be. And he said, yep. <laughs> it's going to rain. And you know, I got the gift of suspicion. So I said, how do you know? He said, I smell it. I smelled cows, and I smelled the after effect of cows. I smelled horses, and I smelled a lot. But I didn't smell no rain, ladies and gentlemen. But that man was so in tune with his environment. He didn't have to see a cloud to know it was going to rain. He could smell it before the clouds ever showed up. Redemption to the nations. It's going to rain in here today. I smell Holy Ghost rain. 
I smell miracles. I smell healing. You say, how do you know? I've been in this too long, and I've been walking with Jesus for a long time, and I can smell him even before he shows up. He is in this house, and I smell cancer about to be healed. I smell miracle money on its way. I smell a divorce that's about to get ripped up and a marriage that's about to be put back. I If you can smell a miracle, give them praise this morning. That man that came that I met in the parking lot, God put him a spirit a few weeks ago, a crazy wild word to declare over the body of Christ. I was sitting in a chair talking to a prophet named Hank Kuhneman. And I said, prophet, I said, I wish... I wish that people could come together and put their money together and start a Holy Ghost spirit filled airline solely for the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ so that no airline or no industry could ever stop us from going to where we need to go to preach the gospel and the prophet said Tony stop wishing and start decreeing and declaring so two weeks ago in Pine Bluffs Iowa I got up and decreed God's going to bring some Holy Ghost tongue talking men and women to Together. They're going to put their money together and we're going to start a Holy Ghost filled airline. He was in that service three weeks ago and now he's in this house today. He said, I've been praying, God, let me be one of those people that will finance that airline. I smell the blessing of the Lord in this house today. I smell debt cancellation in this house today. I smell your cancer being healed today and God making a way. I smell someone's college scholarship in the I you say how do you know because I know the God that's in this house and when he shows up everything is possible it's expectation it's expectation shout expectation I grew up in Chicago there's a team there that plays baseball Poor guys never grew up to be full-grown bears. They've just been cubs for 110 years. <laughs> for 107 years, they were known as the lovable losers. Couldn't win a World Series if you tried to hand it to them. If the mafia tried to orchestrate and change it and paid someone off, they'd still find a way to lose. For 107 years, they didn't win. And people would show up to Wrigley Field acting a fool, hoping that maybe, maybe, as they say in English, que sera, sera. <laughs> Hopefully, maybe they'll win. And they would lose time after time after time. But it didn't stop people from coming, hoping that maybe. I did not leave four-fifths of my children at home, my wife in a hotel, coming to this house today saying, ooh, I just really hope, I just really hope it works this morning. I really hope the sermon sticks. I, I really hope they got someone at the organ tonight. I just, I really hope that people pray, and I really hope God shows up. No, no, I've been in this too long. I stopped hoping a long time ago. I woke up expecting and looking. I just know. I just know that if you'll sing two melodies to heaven, I just know that if you'll lift up your faith, I know that the miracle worker will show. We didn't come here hoping. We came expecting. I'm looking. I'm searching. I'm I'm where, where is the next miracle going to break out? My life was radically changed. I was about 20 years old. It would be 22, 23 years ago. And an evangelist was coming through Chicago doing a healing crusade. And I went to the stadium because I was hungry. It would frustrate me to sit in front of Christian television. And that guy would pray and 24 people come out of wheelchairs. And I'd never seen anybody come out of a wheelchair. And he'd go to the next city and see 36. And I was jealous. Can I be honest? A holy jealousy. Not, 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 not anything against him. It's just that I wanted to see it. I wanted to see it in our churches. And so I snuck into a healing crusade. Why well, I had to sneak is a long story and I don't have time to get into it today. 
But I snuck into that healing crusade. Hungry. And I remember being in the parking lot. And I saw a man helping his wife out of a minivan. She was in a wheelchair. It had one of those ramps. And the ramp was helping her down. And she had an oxygen tank and tubes that were going into her nose. Or I believe it was into her nose. I watched him help her out of the car and wheel her in to the stadium. God let me see that for a reason. We got in that stadium and those people sang for three hours. They sang slow songs and fast songs. They sang white songs and black songs. They even gave me a little Latino song in there. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. They sang everything. And for three hours, the guy that was in charge of it did nothing but say, I give you praise, mighty God. Oops, now you know who it is. Three hours, like a Holy Ghost conductor. And they sang, and they sang, and they sang. They praised, they praised, they praised. Worship filled the stadium. And I heard the shriek of a lady coming from behind me. And I turned around and looked. It was the lady from the parking lot. She had stood up out of the wheelchair. Nobody laid hands on her. No one spoke the word of faith over her. Just She was just in the room. She was just in the house of miracles. And she stood up out of the wheelchair. And when I turned around, I saw her pulling hoses and tubes out of her nose and off of her ears and throwing it down. And I can still see her right now marching like this with her hands raised, just giving God the praise. God, I know what you're capable of doing, and I'm asking you this morning in Chattanooga, do it again, mighty God. Do it in this house, mighty God. Do it amongst these people, mighty God. Nobody even had to pray for her healing. She was just in the right atmosphere. She was just in the right house. She was in the house of miracles. And because she was in the right atmosphere, she was instantly and completely healed by the power of God. And I remember after she gave out that shriek, someone else screamed on the other side. And they were healed. Healing broke out all over that stadium and the man had yet to preach pray or prophesy and he sat there and just said yes thank you mighty god yes thank you mighty god he just all he was doing was he was like i told him later i said you were like the conductor of a holy ghost orchestra you just made sure that the people stayed grateful and they stayed in a posture of praise he said precisely he said because gratitude is the proverbial door to more you can't ever get spoiled you can't ever take it for granted but when god moves you got to have a praise in your spirit and say thank you king of kings for visiting where I am I was so overwhelmed by what was happening in that stadium that I paced I pace when I preach and when I'm nervous and I was pacing I was just pacing because now my eyes have seen what I've always wanted to see live and in color live and in the flesh most people if they want to see miracles they got to turn on a black and white film of A.A. A. Allen praying in a tent on YouTube but I don't believe signs, miracles, and wonders are relegated to black and white television of Allen and Branham and Cole and Roberts. I believe he's still the God of miracles today. I want to see it with my own eyes. I, I, I don't want to just read about what he did. He's the God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. So I want my eyes to see. So I was just pacing. I was just overwhelmed by what was going on in that room. And I, I paced my way. And next thing I know, I'm in the lobby of that arena in Chicago, and, and I'm out in the lobby, and, you know, in Chicago, not everybody's very nice. It's not like you southern people. It took me a long time when I moved here, by the way. You all are so sweet. You're so kind. And hey, baby, and hey, sugar, and howdy, and hi. And I mean, every time I'm like, who are you? Now I learned, you know, because Chicago people talk to you. I mean, you don't talk to people unless you know them. I mean, you just walk in. People don't talk. If they talk, they either want to fight or they're going to rob you, you know? And so you walk in anywhere here in Tennessee, and they're like, hey, sugar. You're like, what? Who's sugar? What you go? And now I learned. It's just y'all are nice. I didn't know. So I'm pacing out there, and these ladies are at the door. The arena was at max capacity. Security had their arms locked. They weren't letting anybody else in. And here are these little Pentecostal ladies in Chicago beating on the door. 
let me in, let me in. One of them called the security guard a fool. Let me in, fool. In the name of Jesus, of course. I mean, you know, we do it all in the name of Jesus. Let me in. And I can still see her. She's hitting the door with her fist and jumping. She said, let me in, let me. Don't you get it? If I get in there, I'm going to get a miracle. That moment changed my life. It's the genesis of this sermon right here. I said, whoa. No one has ever come to my church ready to kick the door down or beat the door and say, if I just get in there, I'm going to get a miracle. We came with our fingers crossed. We were okay leaving the same. Ah, if it doesn't happen, that's all right. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. These people were determined. If I just get in the stadium, I know that I'm going to be healed. And it was that day in Chicago that God revealed to me the highest level of faith that exists. It's the level of expectation. I believe it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen, and I'm not leaving until it does happen. I come in the name of Jesus to deposit a word of faith in the faith of this house and take you from hoping to expectation so that every time you step foot in this house, you start looking. Where's the miracle? Where's the blessing? Where's the finances? Where's what God's going to do? Because I expect it to happen. Every church I go to, I expect someone to get the Holy Ghost. I expect someone to get healed. I stopped praying a long time ago. Oh God, if it be thy will, it is his will. He established it on Calvary when they said by his stripes, you are healed. You have as much right to the promise of healing as you do the promise of salvation. I declare to you today, you got a right to be healed. You got a right to be delivered you got a right to a miracle because of the blood of Jesus you ought to praise him right now because it's your right it's your right to be healed it's your right to be blessed it's your right to be in prosperity it's your right to be well it's your right to be healthy I expect it this morning I'm looking for it this I'm not leaving the same you ought to shout if you believe. I'm not leaving. I expect a miracle. Tell someone I expect a miracle. I expect a healing. I expect a blessing. Shout if you expect it this morning. She expected it. That was the difference. They expected it. They weren't going to leave the same. That's the kind of faith that was in Bethesda. They came to be healed. They came to be delivered. They came to be set free. But there was a man that had been there for 38 years. I'm going to wrap the thing up right now. There was a man that had been there for 38 years. Watching everyone else get healed. Watching everyone else get a miracle. Watching everyone else have breakthrough. Wondering when his moment was going to arrive. Wondering when it might be his turn. He had a lot of church hurt. Because there had been many that had stepped over him. Many that had not helped him. But he was still in the room now I'm gonna say some stuff and criticize him in a minute but I want to give honor to the man tonight first and foremost because he stayed in the room he had an excuse to leave he had an excuse to change churches he had an excuse to be hurt but he knew too much about the God of Bethesda to give up on the God of Bethesda he said if I gotta lay here 38 years I'm not leaving because I know I know what God does in this house and I give honor to every saint of this house who has stuck it out through trial and tribulation division and rebellion critics and religion but you're still in the house you're still standing you're still here and I tell you in Jesus name God not an angel, not a messenger, but God himself 
told me to tell you that God is going to visit you. years. That's a long time to be waiting on a miracle. Long time to watch everyone else get blessed. Long time to watch everyone get what you've been seeking after most of your life. And one day the God of the angels walked right up to him and asked him an easy question. Do you want to be healed? That is a no duh, as we used to say in the 90s. That is a no duh answer right there. This isn't complicated. You don't have to speak Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic. You don't have to be a theologian and you don't have to know the scriptures as good as the Wallace's for this one. It's an easy question. Do you want to be healed? Do you want your marriage to be restored? Do you want your debts to be canceled? Do you want joy and, and, and do you want to be set free from depression? Do you want to be set free from anxiety? Do you want to see God redeem the United States of America? Do you want to see an end to this division between liberals and conservatives? What do you want? It's a yes or no question. Easy. But he can't say yes, and he can't say no, because he's heard at the church, heard at the people. He says to God, this is God, robed in flesh, and in the presence of God, robed in flesh, this man says, I can't find a man, all the single ladies said amen, I can't find a man. To help me think about it for a moment. He's in the presence of the ancient of days. The visible image of the invisible God. Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi. All wrapped up in one. Standing in his presence. Asking him, do you want to be healed? But while talking to God, he's still complaining about men. Ladies and gentlemen, when God shows up, it doesn't matter what man has done to you. It doesn't matter who's offended you. It doesn't matter who's done you wrong. When God shows up, when God shows up, he's about to make everything right. He's about to correct what was, he's about to heal. He's about to deliver. And I'm telling you, God, 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 almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Lily of the Valley, Rose of Sharon, his name is Jesus, has shown up in this house, and because he's here, stop talking about men and start praising God. Ooh, I, I wish my wife was here with me right now. I think she's watching. I'm gonna use her as a. My family's not safe. I use anything they live through as a good sermon. Our oldest went to college six weeks ago. That's her baby. That's her oldest. My wife and I lost our first spouses to cancer. God brought us together four years ago. We got five kids between the two of us. I had three, she had two. That's the way we all became this modern Brady Bunch. And if you tell me the Brady Bunch had six, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. This one has five and we're okay. But her oldest went to college a few weeks ago. She's been raising him alone since he was in kindergarten. She saw him through kindergarten, through his high school graduation. And he went off to college a few weeks ago. And she's been sad. I mean, she's, miss, she's missing her baby. Everybody knows that Zachary will tell you right now. Everybody tell you. She's just, it, 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 there, was, there was a hole. There was a hole in her heart. She's, she's missing Mylan. And so last week for her birthday, we secretly flew Mylan into Johnson City. And we had Mylan waiting in the living room. And she woke up thinking, you know, she had to, you know, get the kids ready for school. You remember the old Dunkin' Donuts commercial? She had time to make the donuts. And she's waking up thinking that she's about to go make breakfast when she looks in her peripheral. And there is Mylan. And you know what happened when Mylan showed up? 
All of a sudden, I'm a good guy. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, nothing else mattered in the house. Didn't matter that Zachary had left his soccer spikes, his soccer cleats right there next to where Milan was sit. Didn't matter that I forgot to put something away. All of, all of a sudden, the hurt didn't matter. The sadness didn't matter. The hole that had, all of a sudden, none, none of those things mattered because her boy was in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is in the house this morning. And in a moment, all of a sudden, whoever did your wrong, it doesn't matter anymore whatever's wrong in your life it doesn't matter anymore why because Jesus is in the house and when he shows up everything is made right but this man hadn't heard this sermon yet he said I don't have a man to help me and the angel comes and the angel stirs the water and someone always jumps ahead of me People are always pushing me, and you know, Ruach Conference shows up, and they bring in all the apostles and all the prophets, and I, dec- I decree that I'm going to get up there, I'm going to get my blessing, and all those other people always pushing and shoving and getting ahead of me, and I can't get my touch because everybody else gets their touch, and then I get left in the back. <laughs> and I've been going to that church for 38 years. I've been following Bishop since he was two. I was in that first church he pastored in the nursery. Could you imagine being a contemporary of Bishop Kevin Wallace? Could you imagine going to Sunday school with him and you're there, uh, God so loved the world, and then he'd get up at four. God so loved the world. (laughs) I could just see him marching with a bottle. God so loved the world. could never play duck duck goose with Kevin Wallace he'd say duck duck and they'd all be falling out goose and they'd be speaking in tongues <laughs> man it's good he's not here today hallelujah take my liberty <laughs> no clue what that has to do with my sermon I just thought about it I just wanted be like playing duck duck goose with wallace my god he never played simon says he said thus saith the lord (laughs) 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 what was i talking about oh yeah tithing no i'm kidding here's this man complaining about how everybody does him wrong how no one gives him a chance in the presence of God that's what gets me ladies and gentlemen God G-O-D Dios todo poderoso para aquellos que ya no hablan inglés this is God Alaba. this is God this is Jesus this is Jesus Yeshua And he's talking about men. Do you see how foolish that sounds? You're in the presence of God and still complaining about what a lawyer did wrong. In the presence of God and complaining about Pennsylvania Avenue. In the presence of God and thinking that some men and women on Capitol Hill dictate whether you're blessed or you're not, I decree over you that while that world says recession, you say revival. While they talk about what they're losing, you talk about what you're gaining. Inflation doesn't touch you because you're covered by the covenant of God. I declare that you got cattle on a thousand hills because you're a sibling of who? You're joint heirs with Christ to the promises of God the Father and whatever belongs to God, whatever belongs to Jesus, belongs to you as well. I'm blessed in the season. I'm blessed in the next season. I'm blessed when a Republican is president. I'm blessed when a Democrat is president because my blessing doesn't come from a White House. But behold the Lamb that one day will occupy the white throne and he said I'm blessed he said you're blessed he said money is yours prosperity is you ought to thank him for who you belong to
Ooh, I like preaching here. Hallelujah. God, talk about men. Perspective, ladies and gentlemen. And notice that God does not address one of his arguments. This is important because some of you have been praying about stuff. You're like, I don't understand why God doesn't talk to me about that. I don't understand why God doesn't zap that one with lightning. <laughs> You're talking about the wrong God. That's Zeus. This is Jesus. <laughs> Jesus doesn't zap with lightning. He zaps with grace and mercy. And he reminds me, such were some of you. But I was merciful and I was patient with you. And if I did it for you, I'll even do it for your enemies. What do you want? To see your enemies die or see your enemies in this altar repenting before the same cross that forgave your sins? In the presence of God, and God doesn't address one argument. He simply says, pick up thy bed and walk. I heard what you're upset about, and I saw your condition. I understand that you've been there 38 years, and I understand that you're a little frustrated. So we're not going to make a mountain out of a molehill. Every good parent knows that sometimes you got to know how to pick your battles. Sometimes it's just that the child hasn't slept enough the night before. So I'm not going to pick every little fight with you. Sometimes it's just hush and go to your room. In this case, it was hush and pick up your bed and walk. Stop talking all that foolishness because it's your mouth that's been canceling out your miracle. It's your mouth that's been delaying what I've been trying to give you. You're so focused on man that you can't see what God is doing. You're so focused on what everyone else is doing and what everyone else is getting that you've taken your eyes off of your own miracle. Who cares who got a new house? Who cares who got a new car? Who cares who just got blessed? If he did it for one, he'll do it for all. When you hear someone got blessed, don't get jealous get expectant because if God did it for them you might be next on the list but what I do take out of the story is that though he was in the house of miracles he was comfortable being sick he was in the house of healing but comfortable in his sickness the Bible says that he had a mattress and he had a pillow comfortable where miracles were taking place that means that he was okay just standing or sitting in the room think about it for a mirror just think about it do you bring a pillow to somewhere where you are only going to be for a moment do you take a pillow on a 28-minute flight from Chattanooga to Atlanta to connect airlines to get to your next flight? Do you take a pillow everywhere you go when you're only going to be there a few minutes? This man showed up with a mattress and a pillow and got comfortable. He was comfortable in his sickness, comfortable in his ailment, comfortable in what was going on with him. And it was, he was all right with just being in the room. Never getting his, but at least I'm in the room. That describes a lot of cultural Christians that I know in North America today. They're comfortable, but unchanged. Comfortable with what he did, but not expecting him to do anything today. They're comfortable talking about Daniel in the lion's den. Comfortable talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Comfortable talking about Jonah, but they don't believe that God can do anything today. But I come with apostolic authority to tell you, pick up your bed and walk in faith. Pick up your bed and walk in miracles. If you wanted to get a miracle and you needed to be at the edge of the pool, why would you be laying 10 feet back on a pillow and on a mattress? I don't have time to get comfortable. I don't intend to stay in this situation very long. I'm believing for instant healing and instant debt cancel. I didn't come to get comfortable. I came to get changed. 
I come to a close. The rest of you mus musicians and singers, come join me because I'm about to close. I've, this is the second time I said that, so this is about, not, yeah. That's, I think I got three more landings in me, but I'm going to go ahead and land this one now since you invite me back. Several years ago, the Lord spoke to me when I got this revelation of the house of healing, the house of expectation. You can't, get, you can't be comfortable in the situation. You ever met one of those people that's always nitpicking? I mean, like, they don't leave you alone. You remember when your kids were little? Um, um, dad, 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 dad. Wait, I'm talking to someone. Okay, dad, 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 dad. Hey, dad, just letting you know I'm here waiting. Don't worry, take your time. I'm just going to be here patiently waiting. And, and finally say, what? Faith, true faith, will put a demand on heaven. I know too much. I've read too much. I've heard too many sermons, and I've been in too many altar calls. Hey, Dad. 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 Father. Abba. Jehovah. Hey, Dad! And we're at the moment where God says, What? And if you'll ask anything, I feel Holy Ghost authority here. If you'll ask anything in my name, it shall be given unto thee. Stand with me in this house. God, help me to understand this house of healing several years ago. He, he helped me to understand this house of healing principle many years ago. And he said, I'm going to anoint you to anoint certain houses as modern day Bethesda's, modern day houses of healing. And he told me to preach the sermon to those houses and to tell those people, no longer will I visit you from time to time but I will make of this house my habitation, says the Spirit of the Lord. I will dwell in the midst of thee. Because you were satisfied. You appreciated when I sent my glory. When I passed by you like I passed by Moses on the mountain. But I saw your hunger for more. And the Lord says your faith, your expectation has drawn me here. And he says, I take residence here. With the apostolic authority God's given me, I decree over this house that it will be known in the region that when you need a miracle, you get to this house. You got cancer, you get to this house. I'm prophesying that some nurses and some doctors that aren't able to say it out loud are going to whisper into a cancer patient's ear. I'm not supposed to tell you this, but there's a church on Bailey. There's a church on Bailey Avenue. It's a big old church. You can't miss it. The police go there. <laughs> we were driving up to the church. Zachary said, Dad, you see the police up there? I said, yeah, that's the church. He's like, what happened? <laughs> Revival happened. Hallelujah. There's a church on Bailey Avenue, and I can't do anything else for you. Your insurance won't let me put any more poison in your body, and your insurance says you can't spend one more night in the hospital. But the, the, I'm telling you, you're going to hear that testimony. Somebody is going to stand here and testify in the microphone what I'm telling you right now. But there's a church on Bailey Avenue. And I heard that when people go there, they're instantly healed of whatever's wrong with them. And I have done everything I can do with my human hands. But God lives in that church. Get to that church and God will give you a miracle. And they will come here expecting, expecting and looking. And when they step in the room, when they step in the room, everything changes. Because the presence of God dwells in the house.
Raise your hands with me if you, if you can. By the authority that God has given me as a minister of the gospel. Through the power that's in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Under the unction of the Holy Ghost. I commission this house a modern day Bethesda. A house of miracles. A house of healing. I decree and declare they don't need healing services. Every day is a healing service. I decree and declare that the miraculous is commonplace here. I decree and declare that even doctors will send their patients here. I decree and declare that it won't just be the ministry, but even the saints of the Most High God that are receiving this commissioning as Mark 16 believers. This sign, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover and with apostolic authority I decree this is Bethesda this is the house of miracles this is the house of healing this is the place where God dwells and because it is his habitation everything is possible the The Lord has put a, he's telling me, he has put a supernatural anointing here that's not found everywhere to heal the broken heart. You are going to hear so many people testify that they were at the brink of suicide. I'm seeing it. It's a line. It looks like a parade. I was going to do this. I was going to do that. I was going to give up. But someone told me about this church. And they said that if I would just step in the room, everything would change. And they're going to testify, I wanted to kill myself. But now I want to live life to its fullest until Jesus comes. This will be a house of healing. This is a house of miracles. It is a house of the joy of the Lord. Ha. Oh, it's coming on me even right now. I see the glory of the Lord filling this room. The joy of the Lord. You're in a waiting pool of the joy of the Lord. Why don't you step in? If you need healing in your body this morning, if you need deliverance in your life, if you need the joy of the Lord, I'd step out from where you are and I'd step into this miracle pool. I'd step right into this altar right now because God is in this house. If you need anything from God when I count to three, get in this altar. One, two, three, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Join me, praise team. Hallelujah. 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 Oh. Hallelujah. There's more room if you need anything from God. Hallelujah. Make room for her to get be able to get closer. I'm waiting on a few more. Someone here, your name is Laura. Laura, you need to get in this altar. God wants to give you the miracle that you've been waiting for. Who's Laura? Are you Laura? Welcome to the Miracle Zone, Laura. This is the place where everything changes.
Hallelujah. 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 You need healing in your eyes, I'm waiting for you. Someone's getting their joy back right now. Joy, come on you right now. Joy, come on you right now. Joy, come on you right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I'm waiting on a few more that need to come. Why would you miss out? You've been waiting too long. There's room right here. There's a few of you that haven't come yet. I'm waiting for you to get right here. of miracles this is the house of me one more time time everything come alive in the name of Jesus this is the house of miracles and we bring everything to the feet of Jesus everything keep singing it this is the house Brother, can I borrow your Bible for just a minute? I saw you praying for him. Take one step, young man. I saw him praying for you with that word on you. I was coming up. I was minding my own business. I was talking to her. And I was minding my own business, and I saw that. And I just felt touched by the Holy Ghost. He's putting the word on you. Here's your assignment. I know we've never met. Learn this book. This is your warranty. This is, the, this is the benefits package. He's going to pray for you again. Put that word on him again. Because the word says you shall live and not die. The word says you're healed. The word says by his stripes you are healed. Touch in Jesus' name. Whew. Whew. He's here. He's here. I sing praises to your name, oh Lord, praises to your name, oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised, sing it out loud, I sing praise. I sing praise out loud. Be free in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. You're free right now. 
No spirit of hell torments you anymore. Lose him and let him go. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, you're free. Get down there and tell him to say, I'm free in Jesus' name. I sing to your name. I'm free in the name of Jesus. If there's been any spirit tormenting you or your children, decree it tonight. I'm free in the name of Jesus. My children are free in the name of Jesus. My family, lift up the name of Jesus.
if you're in this vicinity, I know I'm short. Hey, brother, you raise your hand. If you're by the tall guy and you got a heart condition, you need God to heal your heart, would you raise your hand right now? It's who? It's you. Hello up there. Raise your hand, brother. 24 years. When I've heard the tick-tock of a clock, I know that God's about to heal a heart. I don't believe in coincidences. There's no way that that would happen unless the Holy Ghost orchestrated it. And when I lay hands on you, that heart is going to be made whole. The desire of his heart is to finance revival. He didn't come and say, pray that God would give me a new house. And there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. He didn't say, pray that the Lord would give me season tickets to my favorite football team. And there's nothing wrong with that either. He said, pray that God will put resources in my hand so that I can finance the kingdom for revival. He said, I want to buy jets and helicopters and aircrafts. And I, he said, I want to be able to have things in the field so that preachers can get in and go preach, prophesy, preach the gospel, and then get back home to their family because you don't have to lose your marriage for the ministry. You don't have to lose your children for the ministry. Lord, according to his faith and his requests, let it be so. I pray that tonight, this morning, this afternoon, whatever time it is, I pray that as we lay hands on him, I pray that money and wealth and abundance would come to him so that he can sow it back into the kingdom. I speak airplanes, I speak jets, I speak helicopters, and I even hear the Lord say I'm going to give him some boats so that a hurricane can't stop us from being able to get to people that need the gospel and need resources because you would come all the way to Iowa, all the way to North Carolina, go to Cleveland, and then come to Chattanooga. I pray that when I lay hands on you, it would be symbolic of the riches of heaven coming to your life. And I declare, money cometh, abundance cometh, finances come in Jesus' name. May the Father fill your hands with everything you desire in Jesus' name. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Bishop Wallace, I'm talking to you right now. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I feel the Holy Ghost here. Little Bible college lesson for the aspiring ministers. Don't say, thus saith the Lord. If you're not sure, the Lord saith. If you're not sure, say, this is what I think. Because that, you know, you could get lost in the moment. I don't know how crazy this sounds. Oh, but Bishop Wallace, I know you got this big old beautiful block of real estate right here in the middle of Chattanooga. That's immense. But I was just standing over there walking here, and I heard God say, new real estate. New buildings are coming to this church. I'm prophesying to this house. People are going to say, it looks like you own Chattanooga. And they're going to kind of be right because I'm going to put shopping complexes into your hands, says the Lord. I'm going to put dilapidated buildings into your hands, says the Lord. I'm going to put movie theaters into your hands, says the Spirit of the Lord. I'm going to bring businesses to your house, says the Spirit of the Lord. And everywhere you go in Chattanooga, there's going to be evidence of the house of miracles because I, the Lord, have given you the city.
over you right now Jesus over you lady right next to us speak Jesus over you right now I speak Jesus over this entire section when I speak Jesus I'm speaking healing I'm speaking liberation I'm speaking prosperity Jesus come upon you now and may you never be the same after this moment kings and kingdoms Cancer and COVID, diabetes and kidney disease will all pass away. But there's something about that name. Republicans and Democrats will all pass away. But there's something about the lion, the lamb, the dove. Yes, there's something about that name. Raise your hands, brother. English or Spanish? Doesn't matter. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Ooh. I think I just took a drink of what he was drinking. Mm. Brother in the glasses, take a step forward. No more being in the shadows. No more just hanging out where nobody sees you. You got a target on you and it's not from hell, it's from heaven. He's zeroing in on you. <laughs> Come here, brother. Woo! If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. A broken heart is healed right now in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. You are healed. Joy, joy, joy. Joy bells are ringing. Joy bells are ringing. Get ready, brother. I hear bells. I hear bells. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away but there's something about that name i bless you in jesus name don't know what you need don't know if you came here of your own accord or if that lady pulled you up here but i know you're here and i know god told me not to ignore you and if he told me not to ignore you it's because he hasn't ignored the cry of your heart get ready brother before christmas god's gonna make something impossible possible Ooh, bye -bye. in the name of jesus fire upon your life i'm i know i'm weird 
but I've gotten weirder the last few months. <laughs> There's an old Dorothy Norwood song that I heard. And in the last like four months, God's had me sing it over three people. And I'm not a singer. And, you're like, and you said, I can tell. But Dorothy used to sing a song. Somebody prayed for me. They had me on their mind. They took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. Ooh, I like it too much to stop. Somebody prayed for me. They had me on their mind. They took the time and prayed for me. That's your testimony. And I'm so glad they prayed because you're a product of prayer. I'm so glad they prayed. Yes, I'm so glad they prayed for because you, you could have fallen, but somebody prayed for me. They had me on their mind. They took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. You are a product of prayer. You got what I, I used to hear Bishop Jakes call an almost testimony. I almost, but God. I almost, but God. Because there was someone standing in the gap in prayer. But here's the word of the Lord to you. You did not simply inherit the miracle from the prayer. You had inherited the ministry of prayer. And there will be those that say of you, that lady prayed for me. She had me on her mind. She took the time and prayed for me. Someone you're believing for is gonna stand right here and say, I'm so glad she prayed. Oh, I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed for. There's a miracle you've been believing on. When that person finally gets here, I command you in Jesus' name, you take them by the hand and you march them. You take a Holy Ghost parade right in front of this church because they will be the product of your prayer life. Your prayer has not been in vain, says the Spirit of the Lord. Someone is going to say, I'm so glad. I'm so glad she prayed for me. Oh, you're still here. I thought everyone was leaving. I know it's late. Pastor Chris, I'm going to give it back to you. It's the house of miracles. It's the house of habitation. I'm not trying to rush anybody. I just don't know what your time frame is right now. If you want to stay, you stay. I don't know what the rules are here. As far as I'm concerned, you stay all afternoon if you want. This is a house of healing. My mentor, Morton Buster, taught me that Jesus is a gentleman. He will never embarrass you. He will never embarrass you. Don't ever embarrass somebody using the gifts as an excuse. I don't call this out everywhere, but today... What I'm about to call out, don't raise your hands. Don't say it's me. You'll start church gossip like that, you know. Oh, it's me. Three times in this service, I have felt that there is a couple, maybe there's more, that have already begun divorce proceedings. The word has been used. Lawyers or mediation has been contacted. And the marriage is basically on the ropes. In Jesus' name, the divorce is canceled. You fall back in love because you didn't just make a covenant between man and woman. It's a threefold covenant between man, woman, and God. Put God back in the covenant. Romance come back in Jesus' name. Love come back in Jesus' name. Peace and patience come back. And find yourself a Holy Ghost-filled counselor to talk through 
what's been ailing you. And then when it's fixed, come tell the pastors. And then you can testify. My marriage was at the brink. But I walked into the house of miracles. And God took what looked like it was dead and he... And he's brought my marriage back to life. I seal this word and I seal the mighty acts of God with the Holy Ghost. Nothing misunderstood, nothing taken out of context. Everything done, everything spoken was for the glory of God. And we commission this house, the house of miracles from this day forward. In Jesus' name, somebody give him a mighty praise like it's already done. My God, my God, somebody thank the man of God for poor. Tell him you love him, tell him you love him. Man, what a word, what a word, an on-time word. Woo, man. Woo, there's nothing, there's nothing you can do after that, saints. There's nothing you can do after that. Oh, man, his presence is here. Remember tonight, there's no church. Uh, we're not having church tonight, but at sundown, we start our fast. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, uh, and be here Wednesday night because we have a real treat Wednesday night. We have a prophetess, a woman of God, anointed by the hand of the Lord to deliver the word on Wednesday night, Pastor Kimberly, Laura. So you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. And let me just pray for you real quick. Lord, just bless, bless the people as they go. Touch them, Lord. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that as they leave this place that they would reside under an open heaven. Let the blessings, the manifold blessings of God be bestowed upon them, Father. Let everything they touch be blessed. Let everywhere the sole of their foot treads be given unto them, Father. Let them walk in purpose and in favor. In Jesus' mighty name and everyone in the house said amen. Go in the blessings of the Lord. We love you. What an incredible service. I just absolutely love when faith is stirred in the room. I love hearing about how possible and how real miracles are. It's not something that, you know, we have to wish for. And I just love Pastor Tony's uh, delivery of it. I mean, it was just absolutely incredible. Felt the faith rising in the room, right. even from the time that he just began right. exhorting and began speaking from um, John chapter five. It was just mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. Honestly, such a good service. Listen, I hope... Everyone that's watching, I hope you, you got something. I hope you uh, took notes. I hope you wrote things down. Yeah. It was an incredible. Hey, also go back and watch it because it. it's one of those messages. You just got to watch again yeah. and, and, and continue to take notes and just meditate on. Hey, yeah. remember, no Sunday night. No Sunday Tonight, night. Uh, we want to see you here Wednesday, Wednesday watching or in the room. Yes. We love you guys, and we'll love see you Wednesday. See you.